Hello everyone, welcome to our video. I'm Alfred Yip and I'm Azar Marwa. Today we talk about family planning. Let's say that there is a couple who have decided to tie the knot. Um, the first thing that you would ask is, should you get, do they get married? What would be your advice? I would uh, absolutely advise people to seriously consider a marriage. Hmm. Um, what, provided you understand what it means for the rest of your life. Um, it, marriage is something that provides a lot of legal protection mm -hmm. for people's relationship between each other, mm -hmm. but also their relationship uh, with their children, if they should have children. Yeah, it's a commitment. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be taken slightly. Mm -hmm. It is not something that you should just get drunk and rush into a mini church in Las Vegas. That's not the wrong, that's the wrong way. Yeah, like many areas of the law, mm. together with authority mm -hmm. comes responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so marriage, with marriage, you're taking on certain rights, but with those rights come liabilities, come yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. The, a lot of people have the misconception, I would call it a misconception, that they think a marriage contract, a certificate, would not protect um, a marriage. Actually, it cannot be farther from the truth. I agree. Yeah. Um, okay, let's say that they are getting married and now they plan about having babies. Obviously, this is um, a fairly challenging subject mm. because especially when two men are wanting to have babies, they can try and try, but they cannot really get it. So what are they going to do? Well, uh, really, uh, people who are infertile, yeah, or or maybe one of uh, one of them may be infertile, mm. or together they are infertile. Yeah, in a sense, it's no different between same sex and opposite sex couples. Indeed, they have a few options. They can try uh, medically assisted reproduction. Yeah, so IVF. Yeah, uh, sometimes it, if one of them can't physically give birth to the mm -hmm. child, mm -hmm. they might use something called surrogacy. Yeah, or they might consider adoption. Yeah, and um, and in that respect. Because it's so complicated, let's try a different subject. The first thing would be, um, let's try to adopt. I mean, um, this is a both uh, applying to both gay and lesbian couples. Mm -hmm. They can decide to adopt. But is it easy to get an adoption in Hong Kong? Adoption in Hong Kong, I can say, is very, uh, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, but it really depends on the circumstances. Mm. So uh, there are about 350 adoptions every year okay. in Hong Kong, give or take. Yeah. Um, they are divided into two big baskets. Okay. One of them is intra-family, sometimes okay. called relative adoptions. Yep. Mm -hmm. So those are where uh, maybe parents have died and the uncle, the aunt, the grandmother is adopting the child, or they might be step-parent adoptions. Yes, that's actually the most that we have come across, yeah. step-parent adoptions. Step-parent adoptions, where the court is effectively recognizing that that second parent is a parent and should be treated as a parent yeah. in law for the rest of the child's life. Yeah. Um, and then the other big basket yeah. are non-relative adoptions, yep. stranger adoptions. Stranger adoption. Yeah. Now, that's that's my term for it. The, yes. The legislation has a different word, but yep. effectively where the two people have no relationship with each other. Yeah. Now, for those groups, there are basically two subgroups. Yeah. One group is the, uh, let's say, the uh, assisted adoption, okay. where you've gone to an adoption agency, okay. typically the social welfare department mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or one of the three other adoption agencies. Like that, Mother's Choice. Like Mother's Choice, Bolongol, mm -hmm. and ISS. Okay. And those are the other adoption agencies. Mm -hmm. Now, the system for that kind of adoption mm -hmm. is very rigorous. Actually, yeah. you can say all adoption is yeah. very rigorous. Mm -hmm. But in that system, you really have no control. Mm -hmm. All you can do is you open your life to the adoption unit, you show them and you demonstrate to them that you are qualified, mm -hmm. you're the sort of person who should adopt yeah. the child. Then you set out your preferences. Mm -hmm. Now when you do that, mm -hmm. you limit what child you can be matched with. Yeah. That matching process is a very difficult process mm -hmm. yeah. and really it's like a black box. Yeah. They have a meeting somewhere and mm -hmm. nothing to do with you and someone who has a 
conflict of interest, like let's say the adoption mm -hmm. agency that you mm -hmm. that, that you've sought their help, mm -hmm. they don't make that decision. It's mm -hmm. made by this matching panel. Yeah. Now those cases, they're on their own. Yeah. Now if you want to adopt, you yeah. don't need to adopt as a couple. Yeah. But you can adopt as a couple if you're married. But can you adopt a same-sex couple then? This is one of those questions that needs to be answered by the court. And but no case has been challenged in the court yet? No case has come up. We've okay. had cases where there have been same-sex couples who weren't married. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did a case a few years back um, where one of the parties adopted the child. Mm -hmm. But because they weren't married, mm -hmm. we didn't even attempt a joint adoption. Okay. But there are actually a lot of um, couples, same-sex couples, who are on the queue. And they seem to be at the bottom of the pile. They can never get placed with a child. Yes, the difficulty for them is that they are applying as a sole parent. Yes. And there's always going to be a bit of a bias mm -hmm. towards the joint parent adoption. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you can think of it as being for very good reasons, including yeah. that with a sole parent, what if something happens to that parent? Mm -hmm. With a joint parent, there is, there's a backup. Yeah. yeah. But then um, another limitation is that, for example, two men are married and they want to get um, adoption, only one of the power of the couple is um, on the line as the applicant, mm -hmm. and he will only be placed with boys. That's right. There is a statutory, I won't say bar, but mm -hmm. hurdle mm -hmm. that uh, means that with the exception of very exceptional cases, yeah. Um, for what they call good reason, yeah. so except those good exceptional reason. cases, yeah. mm -hmm. there will not be a young woman or young yeah. girl adopted mm -hmm. by yeah. a, a sole male applicant. Yeah. And in that respect, it's very fair, vice versa. The yes. uh, female, uh, um, lesbian couples cannot adopt a boy. No. No matter no, no, how no. much they want. There is no such exception. Oh, there's no such exception? The exception only applies to males adopting females. Ah, oh, yeah, I learned something new today. If, if you think that that is discriminatory, yes. uh, actually when it came up in the ledge code, yeah. they also thought this is discriminatory. Yeah. Uh, but there is a carve out, like I said, there's yeah. an exceptional carve yeah. out. Uh, and the irony is that if they want to protect the um, young female from being um, I don't know, mistreated, molested, molested. Don't go forward. And in that case, the boy is more likely to be subject uh, to that risk. Well, yeah. If you if you take that mindset, yes, uh, yeah. this is a somewhat outdated yeah. view of yeah. uh, of adoption. Yeah. And uh, I will say, other jurisdictions they've abandoned this. Yes. Uh, including the jurisdictions that yes. our adoption law is based on. Yeah. They looked at it again and said. We should change the law. This this doesn't Absolutely. make sense. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, for couples who like are tired of waiting. Let's say they tried it uh, through the normal um, uh, adoption agency process, and they're not placed with any babies. Um, for the lesbian couple, they can try IVF. That's right, yeah. And in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. that is completely open to them. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with the uh, with the question of yeah. well. What is the status of the non-conceiving mm. or the, the yes. non-carrying yeah. mother? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is a case coming out f fairly soon mm -hmm. from now, I, I, I hope, mm -hmm. uh, where there will be a judgment dealing with mm -hmm. what the status of that second parent is. Okay, but at the moment, it's a it's a bit open in the air. So, um, the if air. if a, a lesbian couple have a baby, and one of the mother is well, one of the um, uh, one of the party is the gestation mother. Mm -hmm. The other one does not have automatic right That's towards right. the baby. So what should they do? Well, uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. they should take steps by seeking legal assistance and mm -hmm. applying for guardianship. Okay. This is something that you can do regardless of whether or not you're married, mm. regardless of whether or not you're in a same-sex or opposite-sex mm -hmm. couple, mm -hmm. uh, both male, both female, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You can go forward to the court and apply for a guardianship order. Mm -hmm. And a guardianship order will give you all the rights and responsibilities, mm -hmm. all the authority of mm -hmm. a parent. Mm -hmm. It is not the same thing as mm. becoming a parent, okay. but it gives you all of the powers that a parent would have during the child's childhood. Okay, um, that is something that actually I find very confusing. What is the difference between a guardianship order and a parental order? And what should people consider applying? 
Well, uh, so you mentioned parental orders. Yeah. Um, I would uh, I would just be more specific about the differences. There's one. So one thing is called a guardianship order. Yeah. Then there's an then there's an adoption order. Yeah. And then there's a parental order. Yeah. A parental order declares that you are the parent, mm. as though you are the natural born mm. parent of yeah. a child. Mm-hmm. That entails a lifelong relationship mm. and a two-way relationship, yeah. a relationship of family, mm. father and son, mm-hmm. father, daughter, mm-hmm. etc. Okay? Mm-hmm. That relationship is one that doesn't only concern the raising mm. and maintenance of the child during yeah. childhood. Yeah. It covers everything from, yeah. from what happens when you die, yeah. what happens when you're sick, who can visit yeah. you in the hospital, yeah. through to all of the other decisions that families make for each other yeah. and the law protects. Guardianship is different. Mm. Uh, well, uh, before we get to guardianship, just to finish that off, yeah. on adoption. Adoption mm. is almost like a parental order, okay. except that we don't, uh, we don't uh, have this fiction that you were always the parent. Yep. We're saying from this date onwards, mm-hmm. you become the parent. Okay. And it is also a lifelong relationship. Okay. Guardianship is different. Guardianship is only to do with the authority of a parent Mm -hmm. that relates to the childhood. Okay. So it is, and in that sense, it is a one-way street. Yeah. That person is not your son or daughter. Okay. They are your ward. Okay. That's a technical legal word, but it Mm -hmm. basically means that Mm -hmm. they're under your authority. Mm Mm-hmm. But that relationship ends when you turn 18. Okay. That's actually very different, Mm -hmm. especially I can imagine when a couple wants to have um, a recognition of the relationship with the baby. Mm-hmm. The only thing that they want is a complete relationship, it's just like any other parents to the child. So the parental order is always going to be preferred. A parental order would be preferred to an adoption order, and an adoption okay. order would be preferred to a guardianship order. But is it more difficult to get a parental order than a guardianship order? Yes. Um, So uh, parental orders, there's declarations of parentage. So Mm. where uh, you would say there is a legal relationship, but you're simply going to the court and saying, court, please, please confirm that Mm -hmm. this relationship exists. Mm -hmm. A parental order is one that happens after a child is born uh, using surrogacy. Okay. Those kind of orders, the court is saying, we will have this fiction that you were born naturally. Okay of these two people. Now to get that order is very, very difficult. Mm. You have to comply with uh, certain requirements set out in Mm -hmm. the in the ordinance Mm -hmm. that deal specifically with the manner in which the child was was uh, born in the surrogacy relationship. Okay. It requires consents before the birth Mm. of the child. Yeah. Now that's a very complicated uh, application process. It Mm. absolutely should be done with Mm -hmm. with the assistance of lawyers. Mm. Um, It is totally different from guardianship. Guardianship is not really concerned with how the child came to be. Mm. It's simply concerned with what's in the best interests of the Mm. child. And typically it will be in the best interests of the child Mm. to be under the authority Mm. and responsibility of the people who are raising the child. Mm. Those people do not need to be married. Mm -hmm. They do not need to be uh, biologically related to you. Mm -hmm. But a parental order is really focused Mm. on how you were born. Mm. Which comes to a very um, um, complicated question that is surrogacy. Mm -hmm. This is particularly the case when we are talking about two men who are in a marriage and they want to have children. Obviously, they cannot carry the child themselves, so they have to rely on mm-hmm. assistance, external assistance. But then surrogacy itself is illegal in Hong Kong. Yes, so the laws relating to surrogacy, mm. um, they are a minefield, yeah. uh, frankly. Mm. And uh, I wouldn't attempt to explain them in any depth mm. uh, over a short video. Yeah. Uh, I would say that people who have had a surrogacy arrangement, mm-hmm. should they be uh, strongly advised mm. to take legal advice as soon as possible, mm. because there are uh, implications, including possible criminal implications. Yes. Uh, And really, to regularize that situation, you need to take advice. Absolutely. You need to consider what application you can make. Absolutely. A lot of people do not understand the gravity of a surrogacy arrangement. Because actually, first of all, surrogacy is a very expensive arrangement. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can afford it. But for Mm -hmm. those who can afford it, the first thing is how to regulate the relationship between 
the couples, the um, surrogate mother, mm -hmm. and the agency to put it together. Mm -hmm. How to um, um, get the mother um, impregnated with the assistant, like IVF, usually mm -hmm. it's the IVF. And then how to ensure the party's rights and liabilities in the course of the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, afterwards, the surrogate mother has to provide the necessary assistance in order for the pa of the parents or the couple to have full right of the child in the foreign court. A lot of time they are either doing by way of um, a birth certificate mm -hmm. with um, both parents listed as the father and mother or the parent one, parent two, we call it. No more father and mother. But then afterwards, um, when they come back to Hong Kong, a lot of them do have this question being faced by the immigration. Where is the child coming from? What happened to the birth mother? Yeah. Whether the consent is available, whether the consent is voluntary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is this a commercial arrangement? And the horrible part is, if it is a commercial arrangement, whether you are in breach of the law, that the authority is actually going to carry out investigation, and if necessary, consider or appropriate, consider prosecution. That's right. Um, really, this, as I said before, is a minefield. Yes. And unfortunately, uh, there were some documentaries produced earlier, mm. and people watched those documentaries, yeah. and they weren't really prepared by lawyers yeah. with an awareness yeah. of what the law is in Hong Kong. Yeah. And so uh, I don't criticize those people who have done those arrangements, or even those people who want to have those kinds of arrangements. Yeah. I totally understand. Understandable. But they need to look for legal advice Absolutely. urgently. Um, Absolutely. It's not something that can be dealt with it's simply by saying, we've applied for this order in the yeah. foreign court, yeah. because Hong Kong law doesn't automatically yeah. recognize that order in the foreign court. Yeah. Before that order is made, I really do think people should take advice, because there are better and worse kinds of foreign orders. Yeah. For example, a foreign adoption order yeah. is much preferable yeah. to a foreign parental order. Yeah. Uh, I won't go into why, yeah. except that one of them, the adoption order, will receive automatic recognition, yeah. whereas the foreign parental order is unlikely to be recognized. Yeah. It is really a minefield, and a lot of people come to lawyers too late. They have the whole process done, and then the, um, with even the birth certificate, and they bring the baby back to Hong Kong without knowing that these kind of situation may arise. And then sometimes they leave that to go for months, years, yeah. until it becomes a problem. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, the courts really encourage people to come forward mm. and not to delay regularizing the situation. And it can be much harder if you wait because it may be that the birth parents, the birth mother, has disappeared in the meantime. Yes. And you can't get evidence from her. So I would really suggest anybody in that situation, you need to take legal advice and you need to do things early. Don't wait until the, um, uh, you have to apply for the passport for the baby, <laughs> or have to enroll him or her into the school. Yeah. It would be far too late. But okay, let's say that um, the parents um, are now in Hong Kong, and then they manage to um, get through the process without any difficulty. The parental order is definitely going to be preferred, right? That's right, yes. Uh, and uh, in that respect, they need to show the um, um, the lineage. The That's right. So there will need to be a DNA test. Okay. Um, now, for same-sex couples, mm -hmm. uh, it's an open question about whether or not uh, they can apply for a parental order. Yeah. Um, it's likely to be a question that will have to be resolved through the courts, mm -hmm. uh, and probably one of those things that will have to go to the higher courts. Yeah. It is actually a very um um sensitive subject that yes. all the parents must um, uh, think it through before um, deciding whether to embark upon that process. And parental order seems to be harder to get. Um, let's just get the guardianship order. Yeah, I, I think that that's always good advice. Mm -hmm. uh, e even it is great advice to do that in the meantime, mm -hmm. uh, while you're trying to regularize, mm -hmm. whether it's adoption or, or, mm -hmm. or a parental order. 
This is a kind of application that can be made at any time. Okay. It is very uh, flexible, mm -hmm. so it, it really uh, it's not important uh, the people's relationship with the child. More important mm -hmm. is what's in the best interest of the child. And two um, same-sex um, couples can apply, um, irrespective whether they are married or not. That's right. So in the case of AA and BB, I know you and I have talked about that case before. Yeah. Um, they were a lesbian couple. They mm -hmm. were not even in a, a same-sex marriage. They mm -hmm. had a kind of civil partnership. Okay. Um, they were able to apply for joint custody mm -hmm. of their two children, mm -hmm. and they were able to uh, get um, what we call uh, care, shared care and control. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a. Uh, this was despite the fact that only one of them had a legal relationship with those mm -hmm. children. Oh, ultimately, um, parental order is much more heavy. Compared mm -hmm. with um, the guardianship order, mm -hmm. but um, for the purpose of the children benefit, guardianship order will be sufficient in most cases. Yes, and it will enable you to both parents to independently and also collectively mm -hmm. make all of the decisions that mm -hmm. the child needs mm -hmm. when the child is a child. Mm -hmm. Now there are. I, I really would suggest anybody uh, mm -hmm. who has this kind of situation where they're in a same-sex couple and they have a child in their care, they really should take legal advice. It can be a very simple application, mm -hmm. but one you definitely need to do with legal assistance. Yeah, um, getting the lawyer um, involved in the very beginning is actually very good advice. We have come across so many cases that we wish to do more for the clients, but it's too late. <laughs> I think, unfortunately, uh, people, l they are intimidated by the legal process mm -hmm. and they either think it should be done very easily and mm -hmm. simply mm -hmm. or they think that um, it's too expensive mm -hmm. and, and they wait until something goes wrong. Mm. And when something goes wrong, mm. it's the wrong time to prepare. You really, uh, I th think of it like a simple dental surgery. Yeah. You know, if you if you do it early on, you can avoid the big surgery. You can avoid having the tooth extracted. Yeah. Or if you just take precautions mm. earlier, mm. but you need to do that with some professional assistance. Nip it in the blood. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's a very um, complicated subject. Um, I think we can wrap it up here, and uh, another day we can talk about another subject. <laughs>